Hi, Taurus and Taurus rising. Here's your horoscope for July 2024. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. Okay, uh, the, the year is just moving right along. Uh, but this should be a very important month for many of you because we start off the month with Mars in your sign. So many of you are uh, going to be quite motivated this month or you're going to be doing a lot of inner reflection. Mars in the first house will bring about inner reflection. But of course, we also have Uranus there. So Mars will be meeting up with Uranus later on in the month. So this could be some exciting news or some dynamic changes that you're going to be in for. Anyway, uh, this reading is for anyone who has a rising sign in Taurus or a sun, uh, a sun in Taurus. This is a general sun sign tropical reading here. And of course, it has to be general because everyone's birthday is different. Everyone's birth chart is different. So it's just a general overview of what is coming up. So as we can see here, the sun and your ruler, Venus uh, and Mercury are all in the third house of communication. So you're filled with all kinds of ideas, uh, the need to uh, express yourself. Uh, maybe you're dealing with family matters or maybe even real estate matters because cancer rules real estate. So as we're starting off this month, there's a lot of thought about financial matters. Obviously, Mars is in uh, Taurus. Uh, Taurus is the sign of money. And so maybe you're thinking a lot more about your finances and your income and your investments. That's going to be the beginning of the uh, July for you. But the second half of the month, everything starts to change because Mars leaves uh, Taurus and Venus leaves and the Sun and Mercury all leave the third house and they all go into the fourth house, which has a lot to do with the home feeling and foundation, real estate matters. Uh, anything to do with emotions, this is all going to be highlighted here the second half of the month. Okay, so uh, looks pretty good overall. It's just that, you know, we're in this no man's land right now because we're going through a massive transition. So everyone is kind of scratching their heads going, what the hell is going on? And we're all trying to figure it out. But the astrology is indicating it still looks okay for Taurus and Taurus rising, especially with Mars going through uh, the first house. And then it'll enter the second house, which has a lot to do with money and finances and investments. Now, Mars in the second house is not the greatest for that. You'll be more motivated, yes, but you might also be impulsive and buying things you don't need. So keep an eye on that as well. All right, so let's get started. And we have the first alignment here uh, on uh, July the 2nd. Neptune goes retrograde in Pisces. So here it is in stationary position. And it's in the 11th house of hopes, wishes, and dreams for the future. And so this is going to go retrograde for at least, uh, what is it, four and a half to five months in this area before it goes direct. It'll be joined by Saturn right there, as you can see here, also in retrograde. And Pluto is in retrograde. So the outer planets, you know, most of the time uh, of the year, most of the year, they go retrograde because they're, they're such a long movement from the Earth, you know, going around the sun. So Neptune going retrograde is going within uh, your imagination. You're thinking about everything you've been through. You're thinking about what you want, your goals and your wishes for the future. So it's like revisiting something. And that's what it means here. OK, so maybe if you let's say you're an artist or a singer or a performer of some kind, maybe you're going back to a place you've you've sung before or you've given a presentation to before. You see what I'm saying? And so not a big deal. It's more of a generational thing. Uh, in other words, every generation will feel this under that time frame. Um, and so what we have here is um, just a revisiting and maybe you're revisiting old friends or old acquaintances or old places that you used to live. And that is also part of this retrograde. So not a big deal. Uh, Mercury enters Leo on the third right there. Now the change of thinking begins because Mercury is about our communication and self-expression. In Leo, it likes to express itself. It, it likes the creative process. It's in the fourth house. So again, we're talking about the home life or family dynamics, or maybe you're speculating on some real estate matters, or you're thinking about remodeling, or you're thinking about, you know, something around the home that wants or needs to change. That is a possibility here now with Mercury. So you're thinking a lot about that, okay, which is totally normal. Uh, we also have the new moon in Cancer on the 5th right here. And so that's going to be at 14 degrees of Cancer. So wherever that is in your birth chart, it's going to activate all of that energy. And so this has a lot to do with, once again, home feeling and foundation because it's in the sign of Cancer. 
but it's the third house. It's communication. Maybe you're communicating on something. Maybe you're, you know, making a lot of phone calls. Maybe you're giving a presentation. Maybe you're doing videos. Maybe you're blogging. Whatever it, whatever it is, it's opening up a two-week uh, window here for some sort of um, self-expression in some way. Okay, and so um, not a bad thing here because uh, your your ruler is closely aligned to it. So maybe there's a new partnership. Maybe there's a new contract or agreement that you're getting in, involved in. And that is a possibility here with the uh, new moon. Now, Venus, your ruler, enters Leo on the uh, 11th and 12th. There it is. So maybe you've moved into a new place. Maybe you're remodeling. Maybe uh, you, know, you, you met a new friend. Uh, whatever it is, Venus in Leo is very creative. Uh, it's very partnership-oriented, likes a lot of attention, but it's in the fourth house. So maybe you're showing off the, you know, the new furniture in your home. Maybe you, you know, you freshly painted something and you want to show it off to your friends. You know, uh, Venus and Leo likes to share uh, the accomplishments. And so uh, this is going to be very romantic in a sense, but also uh, very dramatic and uh, very self-expressive. Now that Venus, your ruler, is going to be going through the fourth house. So totally normal for the course of the next five and a half weeks or so, it'll be transiting that fourth house. So take advantage of it. Now, Mars enters Gemini on the 21st. Now, this is where the dynamics start to change a bit because Mars now enters the sign of communication. And we already have Jupiter in Gemini in the second house of communication. I mean, in the second um, house of income and values and investments. So this is where you might be spending some money or, you know, you're going to be focusing on things pertaining to the home or family dynamics. Maybe you have some investments you want to take care of. Maybe there's a new job. Uh, maybe you have an idea for a new product. This is all going to be on the table. But once again, it is suggesting something to do with communication because Mars is in Gemini. So your mind will be very active and uh, very creative and trying to you know either make more money or take care of your investments or you're speaking to investment brokers and people that manage money or something along those lines this is all going to be the theme here um you know and it could be real estate it could involve real estate you know like buying a house or buying something for the house um you know that's a possibility here with all this energy now the full moon also happens a little while after that uh, transit it's going to be at 29 degrees of Capricorn, right at the high point of your chart. It's going to be opposing the sun here. So and it's going to be conjuncting Pluto. So something to do with the career or the home life is absolutely affected here. And so this could have something to do with uh, your family dynamics. Maybe somebody in your household not doing too well. Uh, could have something to do with work or how you're seen in the public because uh, Pluto is going to be in a high position in, in Capricorn at the high point of your chart here in the ninth house. And so maybe you're giving an important speech. Uh, maybe you're, you're doing an important presentation and you get recognized for something. Uh, you know, maybe you're just coming to terms with, you know, it's time for a change. I need to go somewhere else. I need to do something else. I need to, you know, it's about realizing your purpose. And that's what Capricorn's all about. It's about purpose and structure and foundation and karma. And so when it opposes the, the sun like that, there's this push and pull of, am I in the right place? Is this what I really want? I'm not sure, you know, and you're questioning it all. And so Neptune will be favorably aligned to this. So maybe there's something you need to let go of. Maybe there's some sort of spiritual uh, practice that needs to be had around this uh, full moon. OK, and so whatever it is, um, you know, it'll come to you depending on your birth chart, and where everything falls. But again, this is a very general overview and uh, you'll figure it out. But trust your intuition because Neptune is involved in this full moon. Now, the sun enters Leo on the 22nd right there. Now we're adding more elements to this fourth house. Now, the sun going through the fourth house has a lot to do with family, has a lot to do with feelings. It has a lot to do with more creative endeavors. So as I said earlier, maybe you're doing a project that you need uh, to focus on and you need to put your attention on. And this absolutely could amp all that energy up because it's in the fourth house of home, feeling and foundation. And so it's a very creative time for many of you. So focus your energy on what you can do here. Uh, if you don't have any projects around the home, maybe it has some to do with your house, uh, you know, the family members, the mother, your father and getting close to them and, and just tell them you love them. Uh, Leo is the sign of love 
And so, you know, it could have something to do with that. Uh, if it doesn't have anything to do with that, maybe it has something to do with your children, because the fourth house and the fifth house really do have a lot to do with children uh, and feelings. And so this is going to be amped up also with the Sun, Venus, and Mercury going through this part of your chart. And last but not least, we have uh, Mercury entering Virgo on the 25th and 26th. So now Virgo energy is favorable to a Taurus or a Taurus rising because it's another Earth sign. And this is creativity. This is uh, having more fun. This is, uh, you know, enjoying your, your kids or starting a project or analyzing something that you're passionate about. So I would say take advantage of that as Mercury over the next three weeks makes its way through your fifth house. So it's again a very creative time with all this Leo energy and Mercury going through Virgo in the fifth house. Okay, so there you have it. There's the overview for the month. All right. Uh, have a great month. Uh, stay tuned for this uh, short presentation that I have and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now. Hi, thank you so much for watching my monthly astrology. I really appreciate your support over the years. Have you ever considered learning astrology? Well, you're in luck because I've created a full online astrology course in my private community. It's a full six module course that takes you from the beginning of astrology, what it all means, the mythologies, the houses, all the way to the more advanced techniques, such as progressions, solar returns, how to, how to read transits, how to make predictions. It's all there in this course here. And I even dive into some of the mysterious stuff, you know, what some of the symbolism is all about. So I think you might want to check it out if you're interested. Along with the course, we have a very tight knit community here where everyone helps each other out. And so if someone knows a lot about astrology, they help other people with astrology. So it's a community that really gets involved and, you know, really wants to learn and help each other out. But as you can see here, I have a whole lot more on this uh, private community. Uh, I also have the inner circle live calls each week. Now, this is something that I do twice a month on YouTube, but here I do them on a weekly basis. And I talk about various topics. You get to ask me questions, we interact, and we learn a whole lot more than just astrology. So this could be anything from astrology to what's going on in the world, predictions, politics, whatever it is, we talk about it in the inner circle calls. Of course, I do have videos here that I do not have on YouTube. So you get the, you get uh, those two. And then I've got a private resource vault, which has videos uh, that I suggest watching, books, suggested reading, meditations, and more. So if you're interested in learning astrology or want to be part of a great community that's really growing fast, head on over to the link down below and click on the link and join today. All right. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.